Oh, motherfucker, you can't have my cornbread. That's for damn sure. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree going to begin up in here on your ass right now. If you think about my cornbread, begin to taste out your mouth. That's for damn sure. Now, fuck him. Fuck this. Because I'm from New York City, goddammit. Nobody take no cornbread from me. And that goes for you and any other you motherfucking farmers want to try some shit. You fuck around with me, it's going to be consequences and What up, family? What's good? What's poppin'? It's your boy Trey Frazier, Maestro Styles in the building. Welcome to another episode yes, of the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. We're live on the website, barbershopsportstalkpodcast.com. Make sure y'all follow us on Twitter at barbershopspor2. Also, you can find us on the Facebook page. Also on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. And also on YouTube. If you got YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hey, uh, Maestro Styles, man. Uh, we got a lot to talk about tonight. Hail man. Murray! <laughs> we got a lot <laughs> to get into, man. Um, the play of the year in the NFL. Um, and, and this year's been so crazy because I almost forgot that the NBA draft is tomorrow right it's tomorrow or, th- or was it thursday um i it gotta be i would say i don't know let me say i don't know let me just say i don't know okay i know thursday it's just, i thought i i know it's thursday i thought but i don't know but I, I was reminded of it over the weekend and i was like oh damn right i, I guess they do got a draft since they trying to get mm-hmm. the season started up uh next month and you know free agency nba starts. free agency going yeah, yeah, trades is yesterday. popping. Yeah, trades is popping, and mm-hmm. you know some potential trades going down. So we, we, we definitely going to get into all of that. Um, I, I just got to give some shout outs real quick. Um, happy birthday to my son Nate, who just turned six yes, over sir. the weekend. Happy birthday! He had a great day. Went bowling. Came home. Had a Zoom party. Got some gifts. Uh, everything was all good there. Um, I, I yes, do sir, also. Yes, sir. I do also want to give a happy birthday shout out to one of our listeners, and it's a good friend of mine um, from way back. Listens to the show. Uh, you might know him as the mayor. Um, comes on, you know, in the chat every now and then. Got his own, you know, deal going yes, on. Sir. Uh, so happy birthday to the mayor uh, for certain there, and um, just a couple more. Not birthdays, but some milestones that a uh, couple of podcasts that. Um, I've been on in the past have reached, uh, 200 episodes, uh, shout out to Ben from BS3, BS3 radio. Mm-hmm. Um, he just did his 200 episode of his weekend wrap up show, which he said was the final one. Um, he's not going to be doing that anymore, but he's still going to be doing shows on his platform and things like that. Just not doing a wrap up show anymore. So congrats to Ben uh-huh. from BS, you know, BS3 radio. Uh, for reaching the episodes there. And the other podcast I want to give a shout out to for the episodes is the Touchdowns and Tangents podcast. Um, Kenny and yes, uh, Pete, um, you know, I did their show maybe like a couple years ago. And they're on the West Coast, so I normally don't get a chance to listen to them. But, you know, they got a good show. They do their thing. Um, shout out to them for 200 episodes as well. So all y'all podcasters out there, man, if y'all thinking about getting to this thing, man, y'all can make it happen. If these guys can do it and we just had 200 not too long ago, you, you guys mm-hmm. can do the same. So, you know, shout out to everybody. Um, you, you got anything before uh, we, we, we get into this? Uh, um, Lewis Hamilton, uh, the, 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 the Formula One racer. Has mm-hmm. uh, 
clinched his seventh world championship and is now being considered the most successful race racing driver in uh, Formula One history. Mm-hmm. A black man, if you if you're not, you know, obviously uh, I'm not a Formula One racer fan. I don't watch racing like that. I have no but idea. if you remember him, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, if you remember him from the summertime. Um, black man, cornrows and all, uh, he, uh, won, he won a match somewhere and then, uh, he was, I, I showed a picture of it. I, I sent a picture of it, but he was basically, uh, a, uh, a representative of the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, mm-hmm. via, um, you know, on TV basically. Okay. So, um, but the irony the irony in a black man being considered the best formula 1 race car drive driver in formula 1 history is for certain a milestone not only in uh you know formula 1 history but in black history and officially world history oh, no doubt. so shout out to lewis hamilton no doubt got to get that in there all right um so what were your thoughts about the Hail Murray on Sunday. <laughs> Hail Murray, man. Um, well, first and foremost, uh, I picked against the uh, I picked against them um, against the Cardinals. So yes, yes, yes. I picked against the Cardinals, <laughs> um, so, and for all intents and purposes, I was looking to be right until this uh, magical Player of the Year status type of play happened. And let's be clear, as of as of right now, this is the play of the year. I don't know if anything will beat it. Um, and I'm leaning towards no, nothing will beat it. Um not even another Hail Mary? This Um I mean, sure if it happens, but I don't I don't believe that it'll happen, if I'm being honest with you. I, I believe this the way it happened with him mm-hmm. uh scrambling and just, you know, kinda of throwing it in the air for yep. a wing and a prayer. I mean, even the the seeing it, the visualization of seeing him almost falling over and just kinda of throwing it with his last, you know, strength as he falls over mm-hmm. and, you know, uh 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 D hop just going up there and grabbing it amongst three people, like it it was like it was a movie. <laughs> like it was all the movie, all the football movies you ever wanted to see in real life. I don't know just visually if anything is beaten that this year. All right, yeah, we'll see. Um, I mean, because you're not going to get a lot of hail marys per season. Um, I am curious to go back maybe the last ten years and see how many hail marys have happened since then. I mean, obviously. And- Rodgers has done three of them. Mm, yeah, I mean, and and it probably and Rodgers with been, Janice. It, yeah, it probably should have been four because yeah. I think he because I think he threw one that got called back in that same game, and then he did it again, and it, and he threw it to Janice in that yeah. same uh, so, game. So I don't, um, you know, it was the play of the year, play of the year right now. That's how mm. I feel about it. Mm-hmm. Um, this does 100%, no matter how you slice it, uh, move Kyler Murray a few slots up in this MVP conversation. Even if it only lasts, even if he, if, even if it only lasts for a week and he come back next week mm-hmm. and be complete trash, but this, as it is right now, you know, two days from, you know, from an happening 100% and it's not like Callum Murray's having a bad year he's having a good year this year by the way mm-hmm. um this does one this does 100% off the heels of Lamar Jackson you know the same kind of player uh getting it last year this does 100% put him in that conversation I am not putting him over Russell Wilson I am uh and I know you know we you know weekly we kind of I'm I'm not putting him over I'm not putting him over Patrick Mahomes right now. Um I am Trey. Yeah, I, I am. I, I can't I can't um, do that. I I I can't do that with a guy. I, and I 20, respect and I respect Yeah, yeah, I you know, I and respect. I mean, if it's for but for me and for me Mm-hmm. It's more than stats if you're going to win MVP. Sure, um, and that's not to, and that's not to say he's played bad or even like he's played well. Let's be he he hasn't even played good. He's played well, mm-hmm. but we don't have them. We don't have that moment. We don't have them moments 
um, when you're talking about Patrick Mahomes. I mean, in Patrick Mahomes' uh, MVP year, mm-hmm. he was, you know, throwing no-look passes and throwing it behind his back. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. those And this things. year, and, and, and you might have missed this, but who, who, did they just, who did they just play? Not this past Sunday, but last week. He caught – he took a snap while he was in motion – and do a touchdown pass, and I and I get that's not the most flashiest play, but okay. I've never seen a guy, I've never seen a quarterback be in motion and take a snap. I've n- I've never seen that before. So yeah, d- if, yeah, that don't if, that don't that don't. I get you. Yeah, that's a play, but that don't. Yeah, but we agree. Yeah, that's not it, it, that's that's not as yeah. flashy as what Kyler Murray did on Sunday. I. I I think and, we agree there. And, and, and more than that, what Kyler Murray has been doing through the course of the year. I mean, mm-hmm. the Kansas City Chiefs, while they are, you know, you know, right on on course to win another Super Bowl, mm-hmm. um, it's quiet. You would say that the Car- the Cardinals. It's safe to say that the Cardinals, mm-hmm. um, not you know necessarily statistic. Obviously, they're not a better team than the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. They're making more noise right now than the Kansas City Chiefs are this year, and it's because of Kyler Murray. Sure, sure. I think what has to happen, and I, uh, let's be clear, I, I I agree with you. I think he has moved up in this conversation. Um, I think right now, when you look at the numbers, and let's let's kind of compare it to Lamar Jackson, like his first nine games last year. You compare those numbers to Kyler's numbers this year up to this point, they're very identical. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're right there. So if you want to say Kyler Murray is on pace to do what Lamar did last year, then, you know, you, you got me. But, I, but I, I think what has to happen here, and obviously he's in one of the toughest divisions in football, and right now they got the NFC West lead right now based off of the win, based off of the Seahawks, Losing again, based off of the Rams, and they've beaten the C, and they've and they've be, and let's be clear, just yep. to add to their add to the they've beaten tough teams this year. Yes, they the have. Cardinals. They they've, they've got a couple the of Seahawks. good. Seahawks. They've beaten. They just beat the Bills. They got. They got. They got the win. They got good wins as well. They got some quality wins so, on, I mean, on the resume. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no question about yeah. that. Um, I think they got. They got to win the NFC West. I think, um, and and if Kyler Murray is going to be this MVP candidate turned potential MVP to get up to you know that number one spot, man, he's he's got to continue this tear that he's on right now. Um, they, they for me have to win the West um, for, well, for him to get the um, MVP. I don't- yeah, I don't think they have to win the West, but I think they will. Um, well, I ain't gonna say I think they will. Mm-hmm. They're 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 ahead right now. Yeah, um, they have. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know who's gonna win this division right now. I, I really um, don't. No, I don't either. I don't either because um, with the way clearly, clearly they clearly some teams have, are recognizing that um, if you can slow down Russell Wilson, you can beat this team. Mm-hmm. Because the defense and, is the you defense, know, and right? It, they're gonna be bad every week. I, they're gonna they're gonna be bad, and at best on their on a good day they might they might be average. On a on their best day they'll be average. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to score. If you can outscore the Seahawks, you can win. You can beat the Seahawks. So if you essentially if you can score thirty, mm-hmm. you got a pretty good shot at beating them. Yeah, I think what's missing for Seattle is Chris Carson right now. I think you get that guy back, get this running game going. I, I think that'll help neutralize some of these deficiencies that we've seen them on offense last couple of weeks. You know, last week against Buffalo, you know, it's the turnovers, it's the sacks on offense. You know, this past week against the Rams, you know, same thing. You know, turnovers, um, bad decision making on the part of Russell Wilson. Um, the you know the Jalen to- Ramsey shutting down DK Metcalf. Yeah, yeah, though you know those kinds of things, I, I I think can help get mitigated once you could get a healthy Chris Carson back, and you know try to get this running game going right now because if Russ got to do everything moving forward, if he's got to be you know the beginning to the end for this team, then they they're gonna be on the road 
in the playoffs. Well, I mean, um, look, they're third in the West right now, and I get all three teams are six and three, but mm-hmm. uh, they're third in the West right now. You know, just throwing yeah, yeah. it out there. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, and 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 the conference is not as strong um, this year like I thought it would be. So, well, uh, I won't say I won't say that. I mean, like I said, three teams are six and three. I mean, that's that's not a slouch division. Um, you know, I. Mm-hmm. I'll say this: three teams are six and three. I don't know if all three of them are getting in. I think all three are getting in because I, I, I I don't, don't know. I don't, I don't trust the Bears right now. Um, yeah, you know, I don't what, trust them either. What, what's going on there? You I don't know, trust Nick, them either. Nick right. Foles, you know, was hurt. Not that he was helping them anyway, but now they got to go back to Trubisky, and we all know what Trubisky is at this point. So. I I think the Bears are frauds at this point, um, and 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 that and really it depends on if you think the Vikings have this surge right now because they've won three in a row. They're four and five. They got a favorable schedule coming up. I think they played the Jaguars. They've got the Lions. I think again, um, and they they got somebody else. I think they got Carolina coming up. So, um, I mean, if you think the Vikings with Dalvin Cook running the ball. Um, can find a way to get back into this race and possibly be a threat to take one of those three wild card spots, then maybe there's a a good chance that Seattle doesn't get in if they don't, you know, get their act together. Well, I'll I'll stick to that. I'll stick to they get them getting in. I'll even stick to them winning a the division. Um, I I won't I won't panic because that's what I that's the faith I believe that's the faith I have in Russell Wilson. Um, and I believe that that would be the thing that would be what pushes him over. That would mm-hmm. seal the deal rather. Cause I, cause I, I don't care what people say. I get, he's had two or three bad games consecutively. Yep. Um, he's, he's the MVP for me still right now. Now, um, if he, if he has another bad game and it'd be four games and it, I, you know, I, I wait till that happens. I wait till that, mm-hmm. that impact hits me and, um, you know, and yeah. fill away next next week. But yeah. as of right now, Russell Wilson is still the MVP in my book. Um, with Kyler Murray at a close second, um, and I I can't say I really thought about number three. It's not, but it's not Patrick Mahomes for me. He's not in in my Patrick top Mahomes three. is not number it, three. Not for me. Wow. Wow. Look. <laughs> Uh, look, hey, I, I I hear you. I I mean, I I I don't buy that Mahomes is not in the top three. Um, I, I I hear you for sticking with your pick at you know number one. Um, right now up to this point, I've kind of seen enough to where it's like, okay, Russ is kind of taking a step back here. Now he can still win it. He can still win the MVP. He can he can get back on track. Um, you know, win some games, you know, get this running game going, you know, make some better decisions. I, I, I can see him getting back into this thing, but, um, if we're, if we're talking in top three MVP candidates for me right now, um, it's, it's Mahomes, it's Russ and it's Kyler in, in that order for, for me right now. Mm. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know, kind of moving forward here. And, you know, I agree. Patrick Mahomes, what he's doing is quiet. It's, it's I don't I don't know if that has anything to do with media coverage, um, lack of splash plays, maybe. Um, well, you can't. I, well, I'll say this not to cut you off. I I I can't I can't accept media coverage when they're the Super Bowl champions. Mm-hmm. Right. So th- that's kind of why I can't it's accept like, media coverage. Yeah, so that's why it's kind of like okay, I'd I'd rather just use my own eye tests and you know focus on them more rather than the media force me to put the focus on them. You know, twenty five touchdowns, one interception. I mean, damn. I mean, you can't go better. I mean, you, you can't go better. You could have no interceptions, but I mean, that's that's like the best ratio in football right now if if i'm not mistaken so sure um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is but so i'm gonna yeah, stick with still, that still for me i'm with you still for me mm-hmm. i i can't i yeah i'm, I'm go, i can't ha- i don't have him in my top three mm-hmm. 
But speaking of MVPs, yep. Um, your 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 former MVP or your reigning MVP, less is a better way to say it. Um, and your uh Baltimore Ravens, man. Um, well, what do you put much stock into it? Do I put much stock into the loss? Yeah. Um. I'm I'm on the fence on this one, right? So, so it's because it's it's like this, right? We're already banged up. Like we're 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 starting to see a team where now the injuries are starting to kind of manifest itself, right? So we already don't have a left tackle. You know, we lost Ronnie Stanley in the Steeler game. Um, we lost Brandon Williams in the middle of that game who's one of our best run stuffers. We already had Calais out going into the game, which is another one of our best run stuffers. And when you combine those things together, when you don't have your best run stuffers in the game and you got a team that um, has sort of transformed itself into this running team, I mean, I mean, let's face it, the Patriots are what they are. Um, with Cam at the helm, they're they're gonna run the ball and they're gonna, you know, find ways to use Cam, um, to make plays. We're gonna get gashed in a run game when mm-hmm. when you when you don't have those two guys there. That that that's just you know what what, what it is. Um, and Gakway's not gonna be that dude that's gonna help with the run. He's more of a guy that's gonna get after the quarterback, which. Since we got him, he really hasn't done any of that. Um, some of the other guys, Judon, um, we're, we're just we need we need Calais back. We need Calais back. We need Brandon Williams back. And I and I and I will feel more confident about us moving forward. Um, right now, if I don't have those guys and they're questionable to play in some way. Then I, I I gotta be honest with you, man. Um, I'm I'm worried about this team moving forward, and it's not just the opponent. It's not just our roster right now with the injuries. Look around the AFC. You got the Dolphins at six and three. You got the Colts, the Titans at six and three. You got the Bills seven and three. You got the Raiders at six and three. You, I mean, the Browns at six and three. This is. The AFC is loaded this year. I mean, the the number nine team in the AFC is six and three, and there's only seven playoff spots. So Mm -hmm. there's going to be two teams that's going to be unhappy after week 17 is over. And, you know, these from this point moving forward, these are important games. Next week against the Titans, important game Uh, against Pittsburgh, important game. I. I, I'll be honest. Um, at this point, we 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 kind of lost the division. At this point, um, mm-hmm. you know, with the with the injuries, there's just no way to come back from that to try to win this division. Right now, it's it's all about locking up five through seven, one of those three spots at this point. But I'm um, I'm worried if we don't get some guys back and we can't stop the run and we're still having issues on offense and you know we can't make plays. Then we we might see ourselves out of these playoffs, man. But I'm 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 holding out hope that these guys come back. Um, this was a big deal to me. This this loss was a big big deal to me um, because you had Hollywood Brown come out a couple of weeks ago and said he's not getting the ball enough. Yep, and, still not getting the ball. And this and he's not getting the ball still. And that interception he threw before the half, which. He got greedy on. Like I, I wouldn't have threw the ball right there. I would have tried to just, you know, sprinkle in a couple of more runs, kick the three points, tie it up at thirteen thirteen going into the half because you know the Pats are gonna open up, you know, the second half with the ball. Right. Um. I, I wouldn't have, you know, took that deep shot right there. But man, just watching that play, just you know, with Hollywood Brown and that defender. He he only has he only has two routes. He's got the go route and he's got the out route. And 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 really that's really it with Hollywood Brown right now. Mm. That I think that's what's, you know, killing us right now. 
Now we can find ways to use him more effectively. Um, not in the way that we tried to use him there. I mean, he couldn't even outrun that DB who I think was a rookie on for the Patriots. That's pretty mm. telling. You talking about uh, Jackson? Uh, yeah, Jackson. Yeah. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, he ain't no rookie. He, he's that's not a, he's not a right rookie. There. Yeah, JC Jackson, a vet. Is he okay? Okay. Yeah, oh, Jackson. I'm. I'm. Yeah. You know what? I'm thinking. I'm thinking about another play that he yeah. he didn't he didn't beat his man on. Um, it it was a rookie. Um, DB, but it wasn't that play. But, okay. But yeah, I I I got a problem with, um, I got a problem with him not beating his man, um, on those plays. And, I got you know, a problem with I got a problem in, in regards to Mar- uh, Hollywood Brown, and I'm not calling him Hollywood. I'm calling him Marquise. I'm calling him what his mama called him. Uh, I got a problem with everybody telling me, uh, you know, Marquise Brown. Got all this faint gain fifteen pounds of muscle in the off season, but he still got his speed, this, that, and the third. He gonna start running all these crazy routes and he going you know, he's going to become that number one receiver this year. This is what like people had me gas. I drafted this dude, and you know I'm I don't really draft Ravens on my fantasy teams. Uh, I drafted him in both leagues because I could, I, you know, I got him for, you know, I didn't have to get, you know, get him high. Mm-hmm. Um, I got him in both drafts, thinking, oh, this is going to be a steal, and this just has, this just has not worked out for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, he's been a disappointment to say the least. To say the least, he's been. Uh, a that's being kind, bro. I, yeah, I, I think that's being kind. Um, he's, he's been, been beyond that. Yeah. And, you know, I'll be honest, man, I, I'm not really feeling the energy of, you know, and I, and let's be clear. It's not like Pittsburgh is, you know, dominating and dogging teams, but I'm not really feeling this rivalry like I have in years past this year, even though both teams have a winning record. Like it just feels different with y'all this year than it does in, in, you know, regular years per se, when y'all have winning, winning seasons. How much do you think it has to do with some of the faces of the rivalry? Like, you know, Ray and Ed, Troy and James Harrison. Oh, no. and I'm Hines. sure it's not that. They've been gone for years. They've been gone. Yeah. They, they've been gone for years. Yeah, I'm sure it's not that. I'm sure they, it's not that. They've been gone I, for years. Um, I mean, hell, when y'all, when y'all swept us last year, I felt, I felt, you know, and we didn't have a good team. Or uh, I was more inspired by by this rivalry last year than than maybe this year. I'll be honest, I wasn't inspired by it at all last year. I wasn't inspired. Well, yeah, I would respect that from you because you know we didn't have our quarterback. Full, we was, yeah, we were, it wasn't we, it wasn't full yeah. strength versus full strength. Right. So yeah, I would res- I respect that. I respect that. And um, and just not to cut you off, but sure. if I'm not mistaken, I watch both of those games without your presence, if I'm not mistaken. Like we normally this is like our annual tradition of right. watching Raven Steelers in the same room, and last year we didn't do that. We didn't. I thought I I thought I came out to you once. Last year, no. No. Oh. Because if what you're talking about if you're talking about the Mason Rudolph game where Earl Thomas knocked him out, I watched that at my house. You didn't come over that day. Okay, and, and seventeen was nothing to play. And then the so then in the finale, there was nothing yeah, you know, was really nothing play to play for. And, and quite frankly, I don't even think I was around. I, I, I'm, yeah. I think I might have been either in Atlanta or New York one of those weekends. But gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. we we you know. I felt like, man, like this, this doesn't feel the same. I felt that way last year. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, man. So, but I guess to put a button on it, you are, you are concerned. Yeah, I am. I, I, I am, I am concerned about it because of the injuries and how these injuries, you know, cause look, if Calais, this is more of a defensive problem to you, to, for you than an offensive problem. Uh, I think right now it's both right now. Well, the reason why I, the reason why I ask that is because you know you you know you spoke to defense first and didn't really I mean you you said briefly that the offense needed to get it together I, I don't remember verbatim what you said but you had a, it seemed like you had a lot more to say about you know Claire's Campbell being hurt and you know the injuries on defense yeah than than the when offense. it came to this particular game yeah 
when it, when it came to this particular game because the Patriots were able to run the ball on us, you know, whenever they wanted to do so. Um, particularly, you know, toward the end of the first half, going into the second half, they they did what they wanted to do. And if you think Derrick Henry's not licking his chops again, if it's both man. of those guys ain't there, yeah, man, man, yeah. <laughs> They, yeah, they, they, that offense, That's a good point. Is, that offense is gonna have to, you know, they they got to get back to the roots, man. Because well, I've thing. noticed, I've I've noticed that they've they they've been trying to they've been trying to showcase Lamar more of a passer, and you know I, you know, for me, my expectations was I wanted to see him improve on outside throws, um, you know, back shoulder throws. I wanted him to improve on things like that, but. Now ain't the time for that. Like, I know, I know, we trying to develop you, but look, man, we six and three. We trying to make a playoff push. Look, twenty twenty one. Let's just let's just push the development back to twenty twenty one right now. Damn. Let's let's just so get this. You gotta take it back to the roots. <laughs> let's 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 get take back, it back to old the roots. School. Let's let's come on, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards. Let let's let's get back to. What got us to fourteen and two last year? Let's let's run. Let's be the number one running offense again. Mm-hmm. That that's that's what we need to get back to. If we do that, kill time of possession, you know, limit the other team's offense. Man, we, I I I'd be a hundred percent confident right now. Yeah. Um, the only thing that they got going for themselves right now is the schedule, because we still got to play the Giants. Mm-hmm. Even though they've they've played a lot better lately, and low low key, somebody said this to me Sunday, and mm-hmm. I I tend to agree. Um, watch out for the Giants in the division now. Yeah, they look like the I most agree. complete team in the NFC East right now. I agree with that one hundred percent, man. Um, they just kicked the Philadelphia Eagles' ass on Sunday, and that that was something I did not see coming. <laughs> Yeah, they definitely. I, I, you know, it when she when she said it, mm-hmm. I was like, it, it was, it's like a, a an it was an epiphany. I'm like, damn, they low like for nothing. Mm-hmm. They are most definitely the most right now, and, and really looking like for the rest of the year, they're going to be the most complete team in that division. Yeah, like yeah. to the point where they, to the point where I'm, I am ready. To give them the birth, give them you're the ready playoff to concede. slot. You ready to concede? I'm ready to give them the playoff <laughs> slot. I like right now. I mean, that might change by next week, but right now, I'm ready to give them the playoff spot. Well, look, they still got tough games on the schedule, right? So, and and it's funny, I'm I'm just getting ready to pull the schedule up, but I know they got they got the Bengals still, so that's a winnable game for them. I think Certainly they still got Dallas. I think the final week of the season, so. They'll they'll, they'll have some game. easy games. They, they they'll definitely have that. Um, they're also gonna have some tough games down the stretch, also. So yeah, I got it pulled up here. So they got to play the Seahawks in Seattle. They get the Cardinals at home. They get the Browns at home, and let let's see what the Browns are. Cause I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm not even confident that it took a, a, a Nick Chubb run to seal the deal in a seven ten ball game. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't feel confident if I'm a Browns fan about beating the Texans and only putting up 10 points against them. But you got that and then you know they they got to play us in in Baltimore. So mm-hmm. they still got they still got tough games on the schedule. Like I could see them I could see them splitting these next 6 games and if they get that then that means they're 6 and 10 and that might be enough. And it's funny because I jokingly had said that it would take 6 to win this division. Yeah. But that that's what we're looking at right now. Mm. Um, they would have to pull an upset, and if they would have to pull an upset out of you know in, in a few of those games, mm-hmm. um, watch out for that Seahawks game. What week is that Seahawks game? Uh, week thirteen. Watch so out the, for that Seahawks game. Yep, yep. So the Giants are on a. So the Giants are off this coming week, and then they go to Cincinnati, and then they go to Seattle after that. mm Hmm. Yeah, I, I'll I'll say watch out for that. I'll say watch out for that Seahawks game. Um, they should they should beat Cincinnati. Watch out for that Seahawks game. If they beat that, if they if they beat the Seahawks in Seattle, um, mm-hmm. yeah, 
Um, and then at that point, you just kind of there's a conversation. Give it to there's him, a right? conversation. There's a con- there's at least a conversation that should be had about them winning the division. Oh, and absolutely. They beat Seattle in Seattle. Absolutely. I I know I mentioned this um, maybe a few podcasts episodes ago, but this is the Eagles' schedule coming up at Cleveland, home against Seattle, at Green Bay, home against the Saints, at Arizona. Yeah. That's a tough stretch for them. That's a tough stretch. I think the thing they they got going for them right now is so I I don't I, I don't know about the Browns right now. Like I, I said a couple minutes ago, I, I wouldn't feel confident beating the Texans by just scoring ten points and think that you're going to play some of these better teams and going to try to play you know the same way. I got um, Cleveland beating the Eagles. I won't I won't even waste your time. You got, got you, got, you got Cleveland beating the Eagles. I got Cleveland. Chubb is back. I got Cleveland beating the Eagles. Yeah, yeah. That that's a big difference maker right there. Yeah. Um, Seattle is trending the wrong way, like we talked about earlier. Um, if you know if they don't get Chris Carson back soon enough, that could be a game the Eagles could get. Um, they're not beating Green Bay in 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 Lambeau. They're not doing that. At least you would think so. Right, right. Um, the Saints. So this is interesting. Um, and and shout out to um. You know, well, Drew Brees, um, get well soon. Um, everybody yeah, knows sure. he's got the, you know, the the five broken ribs plus the collapsed lung, so he's gonna be out, and it's gonna be Jameis time. And time for Jameis to get a job. Yep, yep. And and I'll be honest with you, um, I know Sean Payton's been kind of quiet about you know who he wants to start, and let's let's be real, he is not starting Taysom Hill at at quarterback. Like I, I don't know who he thinks he's fooling. You're not starting Taysom Hill. I, I that that would be the most foolish thing you could ever do, right there. Uh, you 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 look, think otherwise? I'll say this. <laughs> I'll say this. I I won't put it past him. I, I know, won't man. put it past him. I I, I don't I, know. I, I just I won't put it past him. Um, I'll say I'll say I'm leaning towards Jameis because of what he did for Teddy Bridgewater last mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, t- I would not put it past them. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't put it past them. Um, I'll say this: I don't, we obviously we don't know how many weeks um, Sh- uh, Drew Brees is going to be out. Mm-hmm. But uh, Jameis Winston, man, this is your ch- this is your chance because uh, Chicago need a quarterback. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know Jacksonville. I mean, I guess uh, they they still going to stick with Minshew even though he out. Um, but I don't, I don't know that, about that. I don't know about that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But they they might finish top that, two that for the draft. Upgrade. Yeah, yeah. There are teams that need upgrades. This year. Absolutely. And this is your tape. This is the tape they're gonna have on you. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. let's get you a job, player. Let's yeah, get you a I, good job, by the way, because we don't. Let's get you a good job. Yep. Yep. I I don't know how this is gonna pan out. Um. Here's here's what I do know. Jameis Winston can throw the football farther than Drew Brees at this stage um, yep. of their careers. As, that yep. that I do know. Now, as far as effect, effectiveness and learning the playbook and things like that, I don't know. But I here's my hope. Here's my hope. He he's been in the quarterback room with these guys. He's working with Sean Payton. He's working with Drew Brees. I, I would I would I would love to believe that Jameis Winston is finally gonna be able to minimize the turnovers and score a lot more than he does turning the ball over. I I, I do have confidence that, um, you know that he's taken some of the points from these guys in this quarterback room. Yeah, it's just a matter of putting it on the field in real time, and you know let's let's see how this shakes out. Let's Who do the Saints real. have this week? They have. Hold on, let me pull their schedule up. And I, and it, it's funny because they got the Falcons. They got the Falcons coming. Oh, up. that would be a perfect game. They got the That's Falcons. A perfect opportunity in the that dome. Is a perfect. Yeah, that is a perfect opportunity for James Winston right there. Yep. Here's that here's their perf- next. Here's their next uh, three here. Uh, Falcons at home. At Denver, uh, at Atlanta to face the Falcons again. At the Eagles, we we just talked about the Eagles' schedule. Um, home against Kansas City, uh, home against the Vikings at Carolina. 
to close. I out. would if, if if Drew Brees is out four games, and this that's just me, you know, speculating. It mm-hmm. might not be that long. Mm-hmm. Um, let me speak to two games. The you said the Falcons and the Eagles are so the next two. The next two is home against Atlanta at Denver at Atlanta at okay, Philly. I just I just wanted to, they should be able to beat Atlanta and Denver the first two. And really, if they got to play Atlanta again in, in Atlanta, they should be able to beat them there too. Mm-hmm. Um, with if Jameis Winston is half you know half the. Mm-hmm. Guy he was in Tampa, meaning being able to score touchdowns. Right, right. Um, I think these next four, I think they go three and one. I think that loss comes in Atlanta because I, I, I think the Falcons under Raheem Morris have played better ball, you know, yes, yeah, uh, under him than they did. Yeah, you know, under there's Dan no Quinn, doubt they've played so. better football. Yeah, yeah there's so no doubt. I, I, and, I, and let's be clear, I'm not even, you know. If we're going, if we're going there early, I'm not even. I I can't pick the Saints. His first outing against Atlanta, even in New Orleans, I, I'm not going to pick him. Mm-hmm. But, um, but if he pulls that game out and right. has one of the, has a game, yeah. Um, you know, now it's time to start looking at the tape and seeing, you know, trying to make sure he gets a job next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He he got to he got to make some money. At this point, if Teddy Bridgewater can make some bread last year filling in for Drew Brees, then Jameis Winston can do the same. Mm-hmm. There's, there's just even no though uh, I, even though I think it's safe to say Teddy Bridgewater um, is a better decision maker than Jameis Winston is. Jameis Winston is a better thrower, a better guy yep. at throwing the ball, just skill wise. Mm-hmm. But making decisions, I would I would lean towards Teddy Bridgewater. I, I agree with that. Teddy's not gonna wreck the game for you um yeah. i would also i would also say teddy's probably not gonna light it up as much as Jameis does I yeah think te- i think right. teddy's I had a couple of Jameis. teddy's had like a couple of lighted up games this year sure sure but not consistent but if you're to... talking about yeah if you're talking about who got a better chance of lighting it up it's definitely Jameis winston no doubt no doubt agree yeah. with that um just a just a side note um with the giants um, DeAndre Baker, who was let go by the Giants, uh, mm-hmm. maybe a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, all those charges have been dropped. So yes, sir. We we got to celebrate that and congratulate them and his lawyers and, for getting them up out of that mess. And hopefully, we get you want to get you back in on the field, on the field. Somebody get, get you on a back on the field somewhere. Field. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, for certain. Uh, well, well. So this was this would have been his second year in the league, right? Because I thought he was a Second. rookie last year. I believe he was a rookie last year. I'm not 100%, okay. but I believe he was a rookie last year. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I feel confident that if not this year, and, and it probably won't be this year that he gets on a roster, but definitely in the offseason, somebody will look at DeAndre Baker and say, okay, this kid's got upside. All the issues are behind him. Let's, you know, bring him in and let's, you know, get him on the right path. So I feel confident about that. Yeah. Uh, hey, um, did you see the did you see the football team versus the Lions? Um. So, I I, I I'm sorry because I I was supposed to when we were talking about the uh, Hale Murray, um, talk about my day on Sunday. Obviously, my son's birthday was Sunday, so I watched no one o'clock games at all. Oh well, Sunday. don't worry. I'm not. I, I wasn't. <laughs> I I don't want to talk about anything about the game. Okay. Um, did you hear who did the play-by-play? Uh, I no, no, I didn't hear that. So the play-by-play was done by none other than Akib Talib. Really? Uh, yeah, he did the play-by-play and okay. for um, Fox. For Fox, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, good play by play he you know he was good mm-hmm. but his voice is the most irritating voice <laughs> mm. I, I i never I, I never realized i hadn't heard him talk before you know you know right, right. thinking about you know him for snatching baby. chains and taking right, names right yeah yeah uh <laughs> i as good as he was i could definitely live without him never doing it again 
Um, because he was good. He was good, mm-hmm. but his voice, his voice was just, it was just like, oh my god, who the hell, who the <laughs> hell is this dude? Because it took me a while to realize. It took me a while. I didn't know who it was. I just was right. watching it like, who the hell is this guy talking here? Um, and then you know they, you know, shortly after I found out it was him, mm-hmm. and you know it, it made me at least pay attention a little more. But um, yeah, he definitely called a good game. I I, was, I will say that one hundred percent. Okay. Um, but yeah, I I need him to get healthy and go play football again. <laughs> so I need a team at, to go pick him up so he never has to do commentating <laughs> again. Nah, that that didn't, he need to stay retired, man. That, that yeah, dude, I know. He, he could go back yeah. to the hood and take chains uh-huh. and take names i just don't yeah i, I don't want to hear him on my play-by-play i, I just don't his, his huh. voice ain't for me his voice yes. ain't for me on a play-by-play yeah i'm gonna he, yeah I'm, but I'm, again, I'm gonna research let me, that let me reiterate he mm-hmm. definitely did do a good job like his perspective on the game and you yep. know he definitely did do a good job mm-hmm. that voice ain't when voice ain't made for radio huh? it, not for me not okay not for me okay yeah i'm gonna I'm research that though so I did after you know all the birthday festivities that afternoon. It was about four o'clock. We just got off the Zoom calls, and I turned the TV on, and you know it was a tie game. It was I think what twenty seven twenty seven. I think was Something like tie that. before. I, think, I don't know if it was twenty seven twenty seven or twenty four twenty four, but yeah, I know I know that. <laughs> Yeah. You know, look again. I, I wasn't here. I didn't. I didn't really want to go over the game. I mean, look, it was the football team, football team, and uh, um, because in sh- in short, they were getting dogged. They mm. were getting dogged. They came back, right, um, right, to I the point where that. I'm like, oh man, they're going to overtime. And mm. yeah, look, Matt, Matthew Stafford is still Matthew Stafford. Um, mm. and 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 he and he put put together a drive for them to get get the field goal and win. Um, now it, it, I, I got to challenge you on that for just a sec. Cause that was a, wasn't that like a 59 yard field goal? Yeah, it was. A, I don't know if it was 59 yards. It was a long field goal. I mean, look, okay. Say what you will about the length of the field goal. Mm-hmm. Yards had to be gained and he got them. Sure. Um, sure. I look, think if, I, I think if the conditions were different and obviously they were indoors, then we'd I think be having if those conditions were different than they're not going for a 59 yeah, yard field goal. And, and we'd be having a different conversation <laughs> yeah, about, you yeah. know, my I, I think what my point is is that um the Redskins in that situation, uh those yards that were given up were mm-hmm. were essentially the would get um yeah. would gave the game gave them the loss. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I and I guess the other way you could put it is score early in the game. Don't be down by what were they down by like seventeen or twenty something like that? Yeah, yeah. Like I think I think it was like I think it was like twenty. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't get don't, down yeah. by that much. If you score early, you wouldn't be in this predicament. Yeah, um, and you know, so yeah, I, I I didn't really care. I didn't really, you know, this wasn't a game I felt needed to be covered. I just wanted to point out that Akeem Talib is now officially doing play by play for for Fox. Mm. Um, I don't think they're giving him the big games. I, I'm, you know, I, and I don't even know. How, I don't know if this was his first. Yeah, I don't know if this was his first game. I I don't know. I just know mm-hmm. now for certain he's doing play by play for Fox. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, because I, I I know um I know Jonathan Vilma. This is his first year doing um color commentary for Fox this year. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard much of him, but people tell me that he's you know pretty good. Um, and there's a couple other guys that um you know we're doing it for the first time this year. Um, but I I do want to get into just a little bit of this uh, Colts Titans game that just got out of hand in the second half um and and the titans just you know couldn't get out of their way with the the special teams issues you know the the block punt for a touchdown um the miss kick as gostowski misses another one again um i i got questions and i know we play them this sunday but i i, I think people should have questions about these titans too man um, it's amazing that, you know, 
three weeks, maybe a month ago, mm-hmm. we were talking about Ryan Tannehill being like a number three MVP candidate. Um, and on TV, there were people saying flat out, mm-hmm. this dude is the MVP, um, you know, so far. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a month later, yeah, we haven't heard Ryan Tannehill. I haven't heard his name for about maybe haven't heard two his weeks, name. I would say. I would say, look, I would say three weeks to a month, we haven't really heard his name. Mm-hmm. Um, he hasn't, yeah, he, he has he has legit disappeared. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for you know, whatever it's worth. Uh mm-hmm. they're they're still six and three. So it's not like, you know, obviously they're still in the race and yep. all that, all those things, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah, I think that a I think that an eight seed right now because of the tiebreaker situation. Okay, yeah. So I, I, so I think it's so I think right now, um, Dolphins is five, the Raiders are six, the Ravens are seven, Titans are eight, and the Browns are nine, and all of those mm. teams are six and three. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, go figure, man. Somebody gonna be pissed. Week yeah, well, I, I, you know, it's just, you know, much like every year in the NFL, but it's just mm-hmm. interesting to me that, um, it's just interesting to me, interesting to me, uh, how a month changes things for Ryan Tannehill, and and you know, it was to the point where I was like, man, you know what? Maybe I need to start giving it up to giving it up to do, mm-hmm. and here we go, a month later, and we're right back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now. I, I wouldn't put this game, this game against the Colts Thursday. For I, I wouldn't For put it on him because I mean the, the special teams was just terrible um, Thursday night. I mean they they you know they gave up the like I said the muff punt for the touchdown, and then I think the the punter shanked a, a punt, and he only kicked it like seventeen yards and gave the Colts a short field. So it's like, I mean, <laughs> what, what what could you do? Yeah. If you're the offense there, what, what what could you possibly do if the special teams isn't doing what they're supposed to do? So, right. Um, I I I guess for the Colts side of things, man. Um, a, you know, all, all three phases, all three phases. I'm sorry, they don't impress me. You said you said it doesn't impress you. The Colts nor Titans impress me, and I get oh. that somebody has to win a division. I, yeah. I agree with that. I, I mean, with those words, I, I, I would agree. I, I mean, it wasn't impressive, but I, I, this was, I, I this was a game the Colts needed to have For sure. in order to you know stay within the teams that are you know six and three right now. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess the Colts are they're top of the AFC South right now, right? Um, for the time being, so. Um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens moving forward. There, I still don't like Philip Rivers. Um, I I still think he's a turnover machine. Um, the accident yeah. is waiting to happen still. So, <laughs> so I'm 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 not gonna you know waver off of that. Um, by by any bit, but um, who who's their running back? Uh, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, I, for the Colts, Jonathan Taylor is in. I thought Jonathan Taylor was injured. I know Naheem Hines has been very productive in the past Himes two weeks. Hines has been weeks, productive. Um, I, I I know Taylor's been getting some carries a lot more. Um, they got the third stringer uh, Wilkins um, mm-hmm. there as well, um, doing some things. So, I mean, they 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 kind of mixing it up, kind of by by committee quiet in team. a sense. Quiet, quiet team. Um, you know, if if you can if you can give Tannehill his flowers when he's uh not yet fucking a game up, you mm-hmm. gotta give your flowers to Philip Rivers, a Hall of Famer who's not fucking who's not, he's not losing the games in the at least in the past two or three games he's yeah. been efficient. Mm-hmm. So um if if I if I if I give him the Tannehill, I kind of gotta give him the Philip Rivers, uh a future Hall of Famer. So uh he he's not fucking it up for the Colts right now. Yeah. Yeah, nah, I hear you, man. Uh, so the Dolphins, um, they win another game. Two was three and zero. Oh. Um, I mean, no, no surprise. I mean, I, yeah. I, I always thought that they were going to beat the Chargers. Um, you know, no matter what. But I, I gotta tell you, man. You know, I, I mentioned that that week seventeen against Buffalo. I think that game's going to be for the AFC East. You know, just kind of given how Buffalo's been t- playing the last few weeks. And I, and I thought they had a good game against Arizona. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I thought they played a good game against Arizona. Josh Allen had a few turnovers, but, yeah, all in all. 
Right. All in all, you know, just, you know, solid football game. But, yo, take a look at the next few games for the Dolphins on the schedule. At Denver, at the Jets, home against the Bengals. Like, they could be... They could be nine and three going into Kansas City um mm-hmm. week and that can mm-hmm. and that and that game against Kansas City is in Miami. Okay. Um well I mean much like we said last week, um we definitely have the Dolphins making the playoffs. Uh mm-hmm. um I think I think I had them more along the lines of six or seven. Um but I at five right now, that's not far fetched right now. Right. I mean, it's not far fetched uh, that they could win the AFC East either. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. They no. could definitely win the AFC East. And then after that, they get the Patriots at home. They go to Vegas to play the Raiders. That's going to be a big game. I'll and tell then- you what, um, this is not on the same level of the Ravens last year. Mm-hmm. But um, with. So, so I'm not. They are. Uh, he is definitely seeing all of the future quarterbacks in this league. He has been on a run of seeing them. Uh, uh, Kyler Murray uh, mm-hmm. this week with Herbert. He's going to go see Mahomes. He's going to go see. Um, 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 you just said him. Um, um, oh, uh, Joe Burrow. There you go, Burrow. Um, mm-hmm. He's he's on a, a tear of going to see the future quarterbacks of this league. Yeah. Um, and winning, and he's been winning games. So yep. take that for what it's worth. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I and I, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna make this claim right now that week 14 with the Chiefs in Miami. Watch out. I think I I, I think I think that can be a close game. I'm not picking the Dolphins to win just yet, but. I, I I think that game could be close. That defense for Miami is playing its ass off right now. Mm-hmm. So we'll they're, see. They're playing. They're making plays. I won't say they're playing their ass off, but they're making plays. Yeah, I mean they're making splash plays though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're making plays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, you can't play any better than that. You know, to, they ain't uh, shutting nobody down. They no, they're plays. not shutting nobody down. Yeah, I mean they're getting they the turnovers. Play. They scoring yeah. on defense. Uh, special teams, you know, kind of sprinkled in there a little bit. Like too. you said, splash, splash. Mm-hmm. Yep. And 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 two is accurate. Let Let's not forget that. Yeah. Let's not forget that yeah. he's a lefty and he's accurate. And so <laughs> that that's a dangerous mix right there. And then they, you know, they like I said, they go to Vegas and then they go to Buffalo. You know, last week of the season. So they they, they I got mean, a shot even to that, win even that Vegas game, even that Vegas game. Mm-hmm. Um. That ain't no that ain't no slouch game. It's not a slouch game. I that might that's, that might be, turn out to be a great game. game. That's that's a playoff game. Yeah. I mean the way I see it right now. Yeah. So um I I, I know I mentioned the Browns earlier, but I, I, I think I gotta put this in perspective. So the Browns are six and three. They've I don't know when the last time they were this good. It's been a while. But it would be something that you the, when you the, say this good, you mean their record? I'm talking about the record. I'm oh, not talking mean, about the okay, roster. I'm not, not talking playing, about yeah, the skill they're positions. They're not playing so good. I'm 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 talking about the record. Um, okay. It, it this would be so Browns that they finally you know and let's remember the schedule's still soft coming down the mm-hmm. stretch. This the schedule's still soft, so you know they they got opportunities. But this would be so Cleveland Browns that they go ten and six. They finally have a relatively good season, and they don't get in the playoffs because you know the AFC is just loaded. That that would just be typical Cleveland Browns right there. I don't know if it's typical, and if I'm the if I'm the Cleveland Browns, if they leave out of this year with a nine and seven record. Um, that is a win and something that they can build on. Um, and that's playoff or not, hmm. um, which probably won't, they won't make the playoffs at nine and seven probably. But if they get yeah. a nine and seven year, hmm. um, I would pop the champagne for a day and get ready for a playoff run at the, the next season. Um, they are above standards right now. Um, even though I don't feel like they're necessarily playing consistently dominant football. Mm hmm. 
they're they're playing good enough because of that roster. They got they got they got football players on that on that field. They they got yeah. them. Yeah. So um, you know, nine and seven should be their goal. The playoffs should be their goal. A winning year should be their goal. But that should be their goal. A winning nine and seven and better. That's that's that mm-hmm. should be their goal. Yeah, yeah. I I do think they'll exceed that. Um, nine and seven. Okay. Just just because okay. of the just because of the schedule. I I okay. I, I, I think they exceed that. It's so just you think gonna, they made the playoffs? And that's the thing because. Like I said, the number nine seed in the conference is six and three. So, right. you, you know, you, you you just never know. I I I don't know, but I I gotta say, I I watching that game, and I'm not literally meaning watching the game because I didn't watch the game, but I saw the final score, and I I I the only thing I could be happy about if I'm a Browns fan is that they got the dub, but yeah, ten points That's against it. against the Texans. Uh, yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't know, man. Like, w- like, when was their last? It's been a while since they've had a complete game, like where offense, defense dominate. Like, I think the last game they've had like that was against. I thought it was against Dallas, wasn't it? Um, sure. I mean, it, it, like the thing is, the thing is. But then it's even hard to put stock into that because it was the Cowboys. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just but like, you should be doing that against the Texans, though. Maybe, 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 maybe on I, offense. I maybe See, on offense, you should be doing here's that. The here's the thing. I don't. I'm giving them their respect because of their record. I don't need the Cleveland Browns. Mm-hmm. So, it, so it's it's. How do I? I, I it, it's like even you bringing them up is like, yeah, we could talk about them because they have a winning record. But is this really a team we looking, we checking for? The only reason we're checking for them is for their record, yes. But it's not like we look at them on the field at any given point and feel like, oh, this team is a good football team, even though even amidst the the roster who they look like on paper, we don't look at this team. The injuries. Yeah, we don't look at this team like this is a team that we believe. We don't believe the Cleveland Browns. Well, we don't believe them to do what exactly? To make the play. Well, they can make the playoffs. We don't believe them to be a dominant team. If they make the playoffs, they'll slide in it. Cause they won't. It, they're not. They'll, they're going to go home first weekend. Yeah, like so. Yeah. For instance, for instance. Um, we don't believe the Miami Dolphins are going to make major noise in a playoff in the playoffs. They might they might win a game. I don't I don't can't really say But we're more excited about the Miami Dolphins than we are the Cleveland Browns. Oh, of course. Of course. That's what I mean by they that's what I mean by they're not making no noise. You know what I'm saying? So like mm-hmm. um uh the the Raiders we don't believe the Raiders, but they're making noise right now because mm-hmm. they are quietly the most uh, uh, efficient offensive team in the league with a full whatever, yeah. whatever that is. And, and they beat the Chiefs already. That. I, I think and you got to give the, the Raiders respect so, for that. Right. So, how the, so, right. so, like, you have those two teams, and then you have the Browns, whose signature win, what is the Cowboys? Uh, it's, it's, I don't even know if you call that a signature win my it? point my point exactly so it's like yeah we could talk about the browns because they have the record yeah. but we don't believe the browns i wouldn't i would not be upset if we didn't talk about the browns no more until they beat uh until they made the playoffs yeah their only signature win is the colts and that's not really saying nothing because if you if you're even being if i'm even being more honest mm-hmm. the colts are in the same are in the same boat for me as the Browns are, they're in the same boat. But it. they're in the same boat. That was an important game for the Browns to have. That that game probably gets them in the playoffs if it, right, if it comes to about, a tiebreaker situation. Right, but I'm talking about in a sea of other AFC teams that are way sure. more interesting, way more exciting, and sure. we believe because they're more interesting and more exciting. Sure. No, I got you. I don't believe the Colts, even though they'll probably get in the playoffs. I don't believe the Browns, even though they have a chance of sliding into the playoffs through back the back door. door. 
Yeah, but I don't believe those two teams. I don't care to ever cover them until they make the playoffs because they're not doing anything on the field that makes me feel like, oh, snap, the Colts is for real or the Browns is for real. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd, mother, I'd rather talk Vegas, Las Vegas Raiders than them two teams. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think with the Raiders on both sides of the ball, they're more interesting. Like, I think with the Colts, defensively, we know that defense is legit. With the Browns, um... It's it's the running game for me. I mean that that's that's really about it. Like there's really nothing else uh, as, as interesting on that football team. I mean you want to give me Miles Mayfield, Garrett, okay? If but, Baker Mayfield was a consistent quarterback like we thought he was going to be, we would be talking about the Browns like we'd be talking about the Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. But because he's not, we're not. And, and like it, it's it's just it's just a, it's just a. It's just a monotonous conversation when you talk about the likes of the Colts and the Browns because you know what you're going to get. I mean, even the Titans, to some effect, with Tannehill not having a good, you know, three weeks to a month, mm-hmm. it's like now they're just teams with good records that we don't really believe. Mm-hmm. And and at this state, for me, at this stage of the game, and we always we do this every year. Mm-hmm. At this stage of the game, it's just like certain teams. It's like why are we even talking about them because we like. They not gonna make no noise for real. If right now those three teams for me in the AFC are the Titans, the Colts, and the Browns, I they yes they have mm. winning records. Yes they do. I don't believe them. Mm. I I I believe the Titans to win a game in the playoffs more than those other two teams. Yeah, but I really don't. Like for instance, if the Titans had the Dolphins in the playoffs, and I get that's not. I don't. I don't know how likely or unlikely that is. If that's the likely. The, yeah, that's a, that's a likely matchup. The Titans possibly. had the Dolph. If the Titans had the Dolphins, I'm taking the Dolphins. Hmm. Road or home don't matter. Don't matter. Hmm. Okay. No, that's interesting. Even though the Titans, who that's obviously in, have a better track record, you would say the Titans are probably the a little team more, more likely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I would take the Dolphins. Okay. And so then, I, but, yeah, but that, then yeah. That, and that would mean, and that would mean they, the Dolphins, are making some noise. But even though, even though that, when they get to that second round, they're getting their butts up out of there. I'm just more so. I'm just more so speaking to this point of the season of the NFL season where we got to start separating the real from the fake. And I, I feel like this is the second week that we didn't kind of got here. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're asking me, Trey, the Colts, the Browns, and the Titans, even if they make the playoffs, they fake. I don't believe them. Okay, so I think the so Chiefs are real, uh, Pittsburgh's real. Um, who am I missing? Buffalo. That yeah. See, I, even though they, you know, Buffalo's seven and what, seven real. and three. Uh, yeah. You think they real? Buffalo's real though. You think? I don't know, man. I I, I don't know. I mean. Because, I mean, when you when you look at what they did last year, I mean, they went 10 and six. But, I mean, they they, they had the little, you know, fourth quarter blown lead in the playoffs. Um, So they're they're, they're trying to establish themselves as one of the, you know, one of the upper echelon teams in the conference, I guess. Well, they're not an upper echelon team. That's not what I'm saying. Let's be very clear. They are not an upper echelon team. I'm talking when I say real and fake. Who has the who has a better chance of beating a upper echelon team? And you think the, the Bills tw- have a chance to beat an upper echelon team? The Bills have a better shot than than the Colts, Browns, and Titans. Yeah, I'm not comparing who's more likely. I'm just well, saying- I'm just talking about I'm just talking about coming to a grips of. Mm-hmm. As, I'm t- I'm trying to. St- where are we at? Week ten, week eleven. Week, week ten, I'm- week ten, week eleven. I'm trying to stop talking about irrelevant teams. That that's where I'm trying to get at. <laughs> and I well, get some teams. I, I was going to say I get where you're going. You're talking see, about record. I I, I get yeah, that. Yeah, they they they. I mean, this look. This is this is the most loaded this conference has been in a long time. Like, I mean, I mean, I think they're worth talking about to a degree. I like, don't think the Colts, Browns, or Titans, maybe the Titans to a lesser degree because of Derrick Henry, but still, um, the but their defense the, is terrible because I, their Titans, their defense is terrible. Yeah, I mean, that's a fact. 
That's a fact. Um, I I don't think those. I don't believe though those three teams. I do not. They are in the hunt. Yes, I do not believe them. Mm-hmm. And 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 as much as I would like to believe my Ravens are for real, um, and are up there because of you know the coach and the style of play, we 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 have yet to win a playoff game with Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I mean, but the but but that's not fair. Because the Ravens have a, they have pedigree, and two, they have probably the second most, uh, the second most electric quarterback, or third if you want sure. to count Russell Wilson sure. in the league. Sure. You know what I'm saying? The second that the Ravens decide, hey, let's stop trying to make uh, Lamar Jackson uncomfortable and develop him in the throwing routes, and let's get him back to what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Last year, then all, the, all, then they're right back in the conversation again. So it's like for me, um, for me and the Ra- no, nah, the Ravens. You you can't take the Ravens out of that conversation. The Ravens, the Bills, um, the Dolphins. Those are probably the three teams. If you want to play, base it on record and mm-hmm. uh, how they play, how they played this year. Those are probably the three teams that you got to say that are not the upper echelon teams. Um, they are for real, and I guess the only two esch- upper echelon teams right now um is Pittsburgh more so because of their record, um, and then the Chiefs' record and what you see on the field. Yeah, Super Bowl champs, defending Super Bowl champs. Right, right, and they look they're they're right on cue to do the same thing. Yep. Um, on the, I think the only reason you got to give the Steelers, and this is me being objective, I'm I, I'm you got me in a somber sure. mode. I ain't in my bag sure right now. Um. <sighs> I, I'm not. I'm in a somber mode right now. I'm um, like normally, you know. I ain't gonna say we could very well be. I mean, Tomlin said it best. The only thing perfect about this team is our record. <laughs> yeah, that the only. I agree with yeah, that. You know what I'm saying? It's, I agree you know that. what I'm saying? This team is a flawed team, and it's week ten, and we're and we're talking about you know hopefully we can right the ship and learn the lessons that we need to learn. And of course, nobody plays a perfect football game, but um, some of our uh, some of our issues uh, have been issues for weeks. Now, um, I will give Tomlin credit. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, we was having issues with third down efficiency on offense and defense. Mm-hmm. In the past two weeks, we haven't so much had that problem, but now the problem is the running game. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and and it seems more like y'all y'all have had these games where it's been like a tale of two halves. You know what I'm saying? So like the Titans game, y'all come out, y'all kill time of possession, y'all score, y'all y'all up 24. What was it? 24 seven or something like that? 24 like nothing. That. And then mm-hmm. the second half is just a completely different half. Uh, against us, y'all come out flat, we dominate, and then y'all you know we let y'all back in the game, and y'all you know make enough plays in the second half to, you know, pull the W out. And even against Dallas, um, terrible first mm-hmm. half, but second half came out, did what y'all had to do, got the dub. It's been it's been a lot of games like that for Pittsburgh, um, up to this point, where it's just been one half y'all dominating, y'all doing y'all thing, and then another half it's you know, it's it's a slow burn. It's yeah, you know. yeah two out of three of the game and two of the, and and I and out of those uh, two of those games, two or three of those games, we didn't have our uh, nose tackle, Alu Alu, who, um, and even Wormley has been uh, kind of key for our running defense. But those, uh, Alu Alu came back last week, running game, mm-hmm. null and void. Um, you know, so all this to say is, is uh, all this to say is, is that um, in regards to Pittsburgh, um, we are a we're we're in that conversation because we're undefeated more than we're in that conversation because of our football play. Sure. But um but we are still playing, you know, better football than a lot of the cats in the AFC. Mm-hmm. Um but it's more about the record. All I'm saying is, all I'm trying to get to a point is is who do you at this point at this point Trey, I'll ask I'll ask you the question because I gave you my three. At this point, who in the AFC do you not believe? And I, I won't keep stretching this because we do eventually I, I, have to get the basketball. I don't believe the Colts. 
Um, let, let's let's get that out the way. And you know, for me to give you some better answers here, I'm just gonna pull up the list here. And um, I'm talking about I'm, I'm I'm clearly I'm only talking about teams that are in the hunt. I'm not talking about the teams that are in the, clearly not in the hunt. Okay, so like we're not talking Patriots. We're not talking. Um, Broncos. We're not talking right. about any we're of those about, teams. We're talking about teams that are in the playoff hunt. All right, no doubt. I don't believe in the Cleveland Browns because, um, mm-hmm. you know, the injuries on offense, and I know they got Chubb back, but I, I Baker still looks shaky to me. I don't believe them. I don't believe the Colts because Phillip Rivers is still going to give you a couple um, almost every game. I, I, I'm... Who's the other team there? The Titans. You know what? I I I I believe in the Titans. Um, just based off the pedigree, um, from last year, um, and the run that they made, I you know they'll they'll find a way to get back. Derrick Henry is a second half guy. They'll they'll mm-hmm. find a way to they will find a way to get in the playoffs and you know make a little bit noise, even if it's just they win the wild card round and then they get knocked out the second round. I do trust okay. them. Um, okay. The the Raiders. Um, cause I, I, I know I, I expressed my distrust for them last week. I actually thought the Broncos was going to upset them, but after watching them, you know, do what they did this weekend, I, 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 I got to lift them up to a level now where I, 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 I got to put some trust into the Raiders one because they run in the football really well with Josh Jacobs Mm -hmm. Um, Derek Carr has been probably the more efficient quarterback, um, in the AFC. I think he's top five in the AFC right now in terms of quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I just think they're doing, I think they're doing a great job with knowing who they are. Like we're we're not going to sling this ball all over the field. We know we got, we got a reliable tight end. We know we got a reliable running back, and we know Derek Carr can make the throws on third down when we need him to. So, and and the defense is still, you know, they okay, they okay. But you know, early in the season they were having their issues. But um, I I I think I've seen enough at this point where I I got to elevate the Raiders to you know my my trust list. Um, I I don't trust. I'm sorry, I don't trust the Bills yet. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I know they've, you know, they've came out like gangbusters, and and you talk about MVP candidates. There were about four weeks where mm-hmm. everybody was talking about Josh Allen being the, you know, yep. one of the MVP candidates, and he and he's kind of slid off for a few weeks. And he had a now he had a good game in Arizona. Um, mm-hmm. he bounced back. He had a great game against the Seahawks. So you you, you, you got to give the Bills that one. That's a that's a good quality win. On the you know on the resume of the Bills, I, yeah. I I I just don't have trust when it gets to the postseason right now. Mm. A- ascending team, but right now I I I don't have the trust right now. Uh, the Dolphins, I got some trust in the Dolphins. I like the coach. Um, I like the quarterback. I love the you know the defense. You know, playing well. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of big names on this roster. Um, just a just a really well coached football team, and if there's anybody I could trust on there is Brian Flores right now, and he's you know you, you talk about pulling a quarterback after winning two games, right? You know because usually you pull the quarterback once he starts having a couple of bad games, but Fitzpatrick mm-hmm. had those two good games, one against the Niners. I believe it was, and I think the other one was against the Jets, if I if I can remember correctly. The fact that he made that decision, the bye week, to put Tua in, was smart on the part of Brian Flores. I I, I got trust in them, and obviously you got the Chiefs, you got the Steelers. I I, I guess um, the Ravens. I'm a little iffy. I'll I'll put the meter more towards the trust side than the not trust side. But they, they have it. Um, so I don't trust the Browns. I don't trust the Colts. I think those are my those are my two teams that I don't okay. trust. I trust everybody else. All right. Um. I don't, can we talk? Can we talk NBA free agency? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Let's uh. Let's talk about uh. James Harden trying to trying to make it the BK man. Let, let Let's talk about that. 
Um, turned down a two-year, $103 million, if I'm not mistaken, uh, con- extension mm-hmm. uh, in order to uh, make his play for the Brooklyn Nets, who already have Kyrie and um, uh, Kevin Durant. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I read this right, they want... Um, they want basically everybody that's not Kevin Durant and Kyrie to come to Houston. I've read some of that. Um, I've also read where, and I and, and I'm in agreement with the Rockets on this part. Why not ask for Kevin Durant if you if you're the Rockets? <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. You 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 get laughed at. It's but, foolish. Yeah, it's foolish. But yeah. But why but yeah. why why, why I, not? I'm with you. Right. Why not? You you know what I'm saying? I mean, look at the salaries. Like mm-hmm. that's that's three max contracts that the mm-hmm. Nets got. I mean, you almost have to get you know trade Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie, Joe Harris. Yeah. Um. What's the what's the center's name? Jared Allen. You you almost have to trade all those guys. <laughs> right. Plus maybe a pick or two for James Harden. So um. Yeah, the, no, that's not ridiculous to ask. Um, it won't work that way, but not that way. But it's but it's not ridiculous to ask. Yeah. Um, as far as James Harden goes, look, James Harden need James Harden won a championship. Mm-hmm. He's made the money. He's you know he's scoring probably the one of the uh, top right now top two or three scores in the league right now. Um, yeah. you know. You know, it's, at this point, it's just like, all right, bro. I, I didn't did all. I didn't did all the individual accolades. I didn't had. I didn't had all the individual accolades. Yeah. At this point, um, I need a ring, and that's that's just what it is. The problem with him going to Brooklyn for me uh, is that Kyrie Irv Kyrie Irving is a ball handler. Um, you are a ball handler. Mm-hmm. You just left this situation where uh, you had two ball handlers that wanted to handle the ball. Right. And have the ball in their possession throughout mm-hmm. the game and nobody's coming off the bench. So it's not like, you know, you gonna have the Kyrie show and then hard come off the bench and, and then it'd be the Not to cut you off, but you can make a case K D can handle the ball. Yeah, but K D K D is fine with not being the primary ball sure. handler. Sure. If if you told you know Kevin Durant, hey man, you know, you ain't gotta handle the ball, I'm sure he'd be fine with it because he'd still get his points, you know in the offense, mm-hmm. whereas James Harden's thing is, is that that's how he gets his points, having the ball. Kyrie Irving, same thing. He gets his points having the ball, breaking you down, shooting, getting to the rim, that type of thing. Yeah. So uh, you having two players that way, we just saw it not work in Houston with uh, Westbrook. Um, it's just it's, it doesn't make sense to want to go to Brooklyn for me. Um, it, I, I don't know to uh if you're james harden and you're trying to get a chip uh because everybody else has guys who handle the ball like mm-hmm. golden state like no you're not going to get the ball out of steph curry's hands you're just not going to do it right, right um maybe uh oklahoma city is not a championship team even if you come to it that's the that's a lateral move you're just might as well have stayed with the rockets right. um you know so i can't think of a team that he could go to and have a champion and have a championship opportunity and him, you know, why, and him be a primary ball handler. Why not the Milwaukee Bucks? Mm. Didn't think about the Bucks. I did not think about the Bucks. Um he cuz he would definitely be a primary the primary ball handler there. And um, he would be a closer. Which they desperately need. But here's the thing. Um, if you bring in James Harden, you are effectively saying that Giannis Antetokounmpo is just a good utility guy, and he's not the guy. Now, that's what I feel. That's mm-hmm. what you feel. Mm-hmm. Do the Bucks feel that way? And I would say the Bucks don't feel that way based on the based on the uh, the Drew Holiday acquisition. Yeah, right. Right. The Drew Holiday acquisition is getting is that's just bringing in a, a, the guy you thought Chris Middleton was going to be, um, you know, mm-hmm. the guy who who will 
you know, when Greek Freak need a break, he'll come in and, right. and dominate. You know, except, what I'm saying? except Drew Holiday is more athletic than Chris Middleton, and I and yeah. I put more faith that Drew Holiday, you know, can you know step up in those moments. Well, that's what I'm saying. Drew Holiday is better than Chris Middleton. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying mm-hmm. that they bought him in because Chris Middleton wasn't doing the job. Yeah. So Drew, uh, Chris Middleton is going to be the third wing to that, you know, that, what do you call it? That three, that three. Uh, yeah, the I'm, big three. Yeah, there you go. That's the term. There, mm-hmm. He's going to be the third option. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and Drew Holiday is obviously a great two-way player. Um, you know, he he's gonna get you twenty and and, and your hope is is that and he's gonna Greek play Freak, defense for you. He's, and he's gonna, gonna play, play defense. defense. Um but I don't I still don't know if that I tweeted about it earlier today. I don't I still don't even with Drew Holiday, I don't still I still don't believe that team beats Miami. With Drew Holiday. Um Yeah, I, I, I think it could go either way. I'm I'm leaning more towards that they could beat Miami. In a, in a series with Drew Holiday, and you didn't have to give up um, Chris Middleton. And by the way, let's not forget they did get um, Bogdanovich. Bog, yeah, um, I mean, now, yes, now, he's a good player. I don't believe him. Now who? Now who? Now which Bogdanovich did they get? Did they get the, the one Bogan. that was with Bogan? They got Bogan, who was with Sacramento last year. With Sacramento, okay. So yeah. it's not the one I was thinking about. The one, uh, the one with the Jazz right now used to be the uh, used to be on the Pacers. Um, previously, but I mean, because I, I haven't watched his, I haven't watched his brother play all that much. I, I know Bohan, Bohan can shoot. I don't know about his brother, and I haven't watched enough Kings games to really, you know, get a feel for that. I know he can get his own basket, but he can get his own basket. Well, he it, don't it, have. It, well, if that's the case, then if you're telling me you got the I was about to call him the Greek freak, but I'm not going to do that. If you got Giannis, you. if you got Drew Holiday, you kept Chris Middleton, and you get a guy that can get his own shot in Bogdanovich, that should be enough to pass the Heat. That that I'm should tell be you enough why it's to not. get to the conference finals in the I'm East. I'm going to tell you why it's not. I'm going to tell you why it's not, though, Trey. It's not because, and it's the same thing I say every single playoffs, when it gets tight, who's going to take over the game? Yeah. It's not going to be Drew Holiday. I don't yeah. believe it's going to be Drew Holiday. Yeah. No, I, I don't believe it is either. It, it's it's still going to it's still gonna fall on the hands of, the, of Giannis. It's Giannis, gonna, and Giannis is not going to deliver. It's still going to fall there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I give the Bucks credit for trying. You know to put sure. some pieces around them. Sure. I would I would have preferred more uh, Bradley Beal to be in yeah. that situation because at least Bradley Beal is not scared. He's gonna take shots. He can close. Right. Um. I I don't know what happened. You know there. I don't even. I'm not even sure they tried to even talk to the Wizards about. Um. You know Bradley Beal. But I give the you books broke up for trying. It's an upgrade. The, I mean, uh, Drew Holiday is an upgrade. It, it, sure, yeah, it's an upgrade, but um, yeah, it's, it, it's just a know. question of can they get back? Really, can they get back to the conference finals? One and two, is it going to be good enough to beat? And let's let's be real about this. I expect Brooklyn to be in that conference right. final in the East. Is it good right. enough to beat the Nets? I don't think it's good enough nope. to beat the Nets. Nope. Nope. So, um. So Chris Paul um mm-hmm. is in Phoenix now. Um I'm 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 still trying to get into Chris Paul's head. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before you go to Chris oh, go Paul, ahead. going mm-hmm. to the Drew Holiday, going back to the Drew Holiday thing. Yeah. Um they they overpaid for this dude. So what was the compensation? They the Pelicans got um Eric Bledsoe three first round picks. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, and and then still some like some conditional picks, three first rounders. If I if I remember that correctly, they got three first oh. rounders. Eric what? Bledsoe. <laughs> let, me, let me let me let me let me let me pull it up. Let me Wait pull it up to be sure. Uh, Man. Drew. Man. Huh. Okay. Uh, Eric Bledsoe, George Hill. Oh, and uh, George Hill, yeah. 
sig- well significant draft compensation. What's significant? This is let me let me pull it up from yeah. NBA the CBS the CBS joint. It says yeah three um, first round picks. But, 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 I see it three first rounds. I see it. Eric Bledsoe, George Hill, is- three first round picks. Yo, the yo the Bucks got beaten the head, yo. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. For for they, they just got Drew yeah. Holiday. They didn't get nobody else from the Pelicans. No, 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 nothing. I saw. Wow, they got some. They got some lower some lower picks or something with it. But uh-huh. um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then but- the thing is, is and. And then the thing is, is that if them, uh, I I don't remember the exact scenario, but what? essentially, if essentially if the Pelicans play have a good season, mm-hmm. um, those picks get better for the Pelicans. <laughs> I forget the scenario of how that happens. Um, I was yeah. listening to uh, somebody on Instagram the other day uh, earlier yeah. today, mm-hmm. and he was telling he was talking about how like this becomes a situation where. Um, the Pelicans would still win as far as draft picks, um, based on how they perform. I, 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 I won't. Um, but that, this, 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 this is a. Let me be. Let, I'm sorry. Let me be clear. This is a loss for the Milwaukee Bucks. Let me just. Let me just get to what my point is. This is yeah. a loss. Th- th- this is. Th- this is a James Harden compensation, wouldn't you say? Yeah. This is some. Right. This is like. Drew Holiday, with respect to him, his game, he's a good player. He, he's going to get you 20. He's one of the better two-way defenders in the game. No doubt about it. Mm. This does and, not make the Milwaukee Bucks the Eastern Conference champions. And Giannis hasn't signed the new deal yet, right? Well, the idea is, the idea is, or the thinking is, from what I'm understanding, is, is that he's going to play this year, obviously. Yep. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, hopefully they're gonna make the finals, and then he's gonna want to stay. Cause that, cause he's a free agent after the season. Yeah, I think. And then the best they could do, and I, so, and I get it. Free agency, free agency is far from over. Yeah, but um, the best they could do is Drew Holiday and, and and Bogdanovich. Yeah, that that's not the best they could do. That that was just way too much compensation. That that is that's what you give up to get James Harden. I mean, and 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 maybe to a certain extent Bradley Beal to a certain extent. Yeah. But Drew Drew yeah. Holiday and I and I get he, you know, he could he could score, he could um, you know, he could play defense to a player and but uh, Yeah, I, I, it, the Bucks mortgage their robbed. future. Yeah, they 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 got beaten yeah. head, but this is gonna be this is gonna be terrible. Like there's gonna be guys losing their jobs in the front office if they don't get to the finals this year. And on top of oh. that, if they lose Giannis to free agency. So this is a scenario. After next year, they don't make the finals. They lose out on re signing Giannis. Um they don't have first round picks in that particular draft and the future drafts. That's a mm-hmm. man that, that that's if you were NBA franchise, that that is not something you want to be in. Like this almost, yeah. this almost reminds me of what the Nets did um, in the Garnett and Pierce trade where they gave up all those assets and, and it didn't work yeah. out. And then they were, they were sort of in like um, draft hell, I guess you could say, because they never had, like their first round picks for about maybe two three years, up until recent. Like this could happen then, to the Milwaukee Bucks. Still, but yeah, but but even with them, they've you know obviously they've turned it around. So it's just like yeah, they turned it around. But I'm saying like they were like they were bad for about two yeah, three years two, because three years, yeah. because they didn't have those draft picks. Maybe maybe because I would say maybe because of those draft picks. They don't. I mean, I won't. I mean, you don't know what that turns into if, um, right. you know, right. who, depending on who they draft. But they definitely did draft Karis LeVert. They definitely did draft. Uh, I don't know if they drafted in Witty, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, they 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 put together a team within those two or three years that was a playoff caliber. That was a playoff caliber team mm-hmm. um, for for whatever it's worth. So, um yeah. 
Yeah, but I don't believe that the Milwaukee Bucks are going to have the same fortune as the Brooklyn Nets did. Yeah, um, heads are going to roll. Heads yeah. are going to roll. Heads In will short, roll. Heads are going to roll. And that franchise, it could take a while for them to get back. Yeah, yeah, it, it could take a while. But Chris um, Paul, Chris yeah, Paul, yeah. To the so so the Chris Paul uh, trade. So um, I like it. So the I like it too. Um, I, I I do like it on both sides. Um, the Thunder get more draft picks. Um, I saw some crazy number. I think they got like 16 draft picks over the next three drafts. I think it is. Okay. Which which is which is crazy. So you know we'll we'll see how that pans out. Um, you know when these coming drafts. Um, they're I, they're basically saying, hey, we're just gonna not be good this year, and we'll you know we'll just try to you know reload in the next couple of years. But for right. the Phoenix Suns. To have Chris they Paul, be a fifth seed this year. Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, they should be like you said. They should be a fifth seed in that Western Conference. Yeah, they 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 really should be. I already had them going to the playoffs before this Chris Paul trade, mm-hmm. and I and I know you disagree with me because we talked about the eight and no um, run that they had in the bubble, and you know I was of the notion that that was going to continue, you know, going into this coming season. And you kind of, you kind of was like, eh, let's, you know. Let's I was more like, let's see. Bit. Yeah, I'm more like, let's see. You was more like, yeah, you was more like, let's see. I, I was a little more confident, um, given that they hadn't played in like three, four months and that they came out, you know, guns blazing. So, um, but for certain with Chris Paul, now you got somebody that can, you know, distribute the rock. Handle yep. the ball. Um, mm-hmm. Devin Booker's going to get easier shots. I mean, he can yep. get his own shot, but he's going to get easier shots. Easier, way easier shots. DeAndre Ayton is going to eat in the paint. He's going to get lobs. He's, you know, he's going to be better. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I would expect this team to be, at worst, the number five seed in the West. Yep. Yep. Dennis Schroeder to the Lakers. Is that official? I thought it was official. It's not. Um, I thought I, he was I there. I don't. I don't think that's official yet. Okay. All right. Well, I know that was talks. A, I know what. I know there were talks okay, about. I that. thought it. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was official. Let me. Let me see. Dun, dun, dun. Pulled off an awesome trade. Oh, yeah. I, I. I just. I saw the tweet from uh, Magic Johnson, uh, who's always tweeting, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Acquired Dennis Schroeder. Um. So I wonder what the Lakers gave up in that. Oh, did they, they give him and Danny then Green? They, uh, Danny Green, I thought it was, yes. Yeah, yeah. They 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 looked they gave up uh Danny Green, looks like. Uh, I don't I don't see anything. This else. help or hurt. This helps or hurt. Uh this Or does helps. it even make a difference with Okay, yeah, the, I'm with the, you. The, the, this helps. Um here here's the way I look at it. LeBron is not getting younger. He's still great, but He's going to be, what, 37 years old next year. So you're going to need mm-hmm. somebody mm-hmm. to come in, handle the ball, run the offense, and Dennis Schroeder can do that for you. Yep. So the Lakers, no, yeah. they, they just got rich. No man. argument there. Yep. No so they also here. looks like they um, gave up the um, – Looks like they gave up the number twenty eight pick in uh, tomorrow's draft for Dennis Schroeder. Also, okay. So, so OKC is okay. going to have the number twenty eight pick tomorrow, in addition to okay. I guess whatever other first round pick they got. Yeah. So okay. This um. So I I also saw Demar Derozan. He did accept um a contract from the Spurs. I think so. I think he's going to stay there. I know there were Good. talks about trading him. To the Lakers, so you know he's he's, he's going to stay with the Spurs. There, you uh, you sound like you. I'm okay. That's you, fine. You, look, look. Um, please, please don't make me. He should be at a quiet team. He should be on a team that's quiet. And he could just play good basketball quietly. But I think when the lights hit him, it, he it gets a little different for him. Yeah. Yeah, no question about it. So, yeah, I, I think that's where I stand at with DeMar DeRozan. No no question. No question. Shout, shout out to DeMar DeRozan, though. For certain. Uh, 
he 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 definitely um came out i think last year or the year before and had the conversation about mental illness and how mm-hmm. you know that affects him and you know how he deals with that so you know shout out to him i don't know if you have anything else i have one more thing um i actually hold on a minute i got two more i got two more things um basketball related so there's been this discussion about Westbrook being traded yep. to the Wizards for John Don't Wall. Don't do it. <laughs> do not. You don't want do Mr. It. Triple Double, man? <laughs> I do not want Russell Westbrook in Washington D.C. Um and for all intents and purposes it looks like it's not going to happen. Um I think they sent the uh Rockets. The Rockets want more than what what the Wizards are willing to give up is is the last thing I heard. Mm-hmm. Um no, I don't want him. I, I want John Wall. It, I want John Wall to get healthy, and I want him to play basketball with Bradley Bill. That's what I want. Mm. And I get that that train. That, I, I don't know that train may or may not be over. It lean probably leaning leaning more towards it is over. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what I want next season. That's mm-hmm. what I want: a healthy John Wall yep. and a healthy Bradley Bill in the Eastern Conference going against whoever. Um, look, they won't beat the Brooklyn Nets. Um, they should be they a beat... playoff team, though. Yeah, and should they be able to beat? The... Should they be able to shock the Toronto Raptors with a healthy John Wall and a healthy Bradley Bill? With the way Bradley Bill's been playing in the past two seasons, I think so. They should be able to shock the Boston Celtics. That's a fact. Or anybody, and, and really, the, the I'll throw the Heat in there too. If you if you got a healthy yeah. Bill and Wall with with those pieces. I, why, why not? Yeah, I I am the only the only with with a healthy. If John Wall comes in like John Wall we know, and Bradley Bill comes in like Bradley Bill the past two or three years, mm-hmm. um, the only team in the, in the East that scares me is the Brooklyn Nets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean everybody else. I mean, yeah, this is the Sixers. I, I I forgot about the Sixers. Yeah, yeah, y'all they can't challenge us. Y'all can't challenge the Sixers. You know, the Sixers don't scare me. I think Thomas Bryant can deal with Joel Embiid. Mm-hmm. Right. That's just right. how I feel. I think I I do think the Sixers will be a better basketball team this year under Doc Rivers, though. That's true. I I I, I do true. think that. I don't know that it's going to translate to a Finals appearance, though. Especially no. if you got healthy Kevin Durant that no. you got to go through. No. So no, and no, but no, they, no, but, no, and no. But they will be they will be a better basketball. They'll be a team. better team. Yes. Yes. For, for certain. So Westbrook, did this, you know, because this is still kind of dangling out there. Um, sure. Does at this point he should just stay in Houston if James Harden wants to get up out of there. He'll he'll have the Rockets to himself at that point. Yeah, yeah, but um, then the but Harden is not going to the Nets. So unless you're talking about Harden going to the Sixers, you don't think that's um, going to happen. I don't think Harden is going to the Brooklyn Nets. No, I don't mm. think that's happening. I don't think that's so. So how does it how does it play out? It's the NBA, but no. So so how does it play out? Because huh? he he turned down the extension, right? He turned down the extension, but that doesn't mean he won't okay. go back and sign it. That's that, one, right? Um, right. Yeah. Um, he's looking for and he's looking for an opportunity to win a championship. Mm-hmm. I think the Sixers is the is is a good consolation prize with a still an opportunity to go to the championship. If you're talking about Doc Rivers, Joel Embiid, um, I, I would I imagine think, that I ben think Ben Simmons, Simmons is in that trade, though. Yeah, I about to say, I would imagine that Ben Simmons would be yeah. gone. But, um, but, but a ball, do- but he's going to be able to handle the ball. Yep. He's going to score 30 in the Eastern Conference. Mm-hmm. He's going to score 30 a game in the Eastern Conference. If you can get Joel Embiid to score 20 um, and Tobias to score 15. Yeah, I was just about <laughs> to say, Tobias will be a better player for having James Harden around. Right. So if you can get if you can get if you can get those types of things for those three players, um, and they play some good defense, which you would think Doc Rivers would have them in line to play some good defense. Um they have championship aspirations for certain. Um, I think that's if, if he has to go if he goes anywhere, mm-hmm. he probably goes to the Sixers. Hmm. Yeah, that, that that's interesting. And they do have assets 
to give up. I mean, Ben, I mean, I think if you put Ben Simmons, maybe a first rounder and another player, that's probably almost enough to get him. I'm but not, let's be clear. The Rockets don't want to get rid of the James Harden. That's that's the, that's the other sure, piece. Sure, sure. They don't want James Harden to leave. James Harden wants to leave, but they don't want him to go. Sure, sure. But so I think could, I think we all know how this, these things play out, though. Too well, I don't think that's the same case. I don't I don't know that that's necessarily the same case with James Harden. I don't know that James Harden doesn't want to be with the Rockets. I think James Harden doesn't believe they're going to put a championship team around them. Hmm. So um, yeah, the change of coach and yeah, yeah, yeah different yeah. system. So does that change? So does that change with uh, five million more dollars? Because he's all the, he's going to be the first player. He would have been the first person to make fifty million a year. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we up it to fifty five, are you so tri- are you tripping off of um, right? You know and the that, championship and now, say- and that's what I'm saying. Like I'm trying to figure out what does he value more? Does he value being the first fifty million player, or does he value wanting to get that title? Well, how long has he? Been? He's been in the league ten years, right? About ten years. About ten years. Up, yeah. Okay. About ten years. Yeah. Um. Yes, the only thing he has left to get is a championship. But mm-hmm. is he a Hall of Famer right now? Absolutely. Yes. yes. There's no question. Mm-hmm. Um. Maybe the money is enough. Look, everybody don't look. There are more Hall of Famers that don't get. There are more dominant Hall of Famers that don't get the championship than there are dominant Hall of Famers that do. Mm-hmm. No question. Um, um, so yeah, your 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 question is right. What's more important to him? Um, but I think. I think what he'll find if, if the Nets is what he want, I don't think he'll get the Nets. That unless he's willing to take that pay cut. Yeah. Um Yeah. I'm just not confident in him staying in Houston. You know what I'm saying? Like he might not go to the Nets, but I don't think he's staying with the Rockets. I I I haven't heard for and, and I, maybe I just haven't heard it. I haven't heard enough disdain, disdain for him playing for the Rockets. All I heard is he wanted to go and automatic, and maybe this is just the way I perceived it. Yep. I just assumed I right, he don't want to be there because he know he's not getting no chip in Houston, which he probably should have known two years ago, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um he probably realizes I'm not gonna get the chip. What happens for me now? Mm-hmm. And, in Houston. I think. And I think and he, I think the best way to do that is come east. Cause guess what? The Mike Skin brothers in Golden State, they coming back. LeBron yeah. is still in LA. Mm-hmm. You know, the Clippers. Clippers I mean, say yeah. Denver. The Clippers, Denver. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's not going to be hell, Utah. I mean, even though yeah. we don't put them in the same breath, but, you know, those are going to be some tough teams. Uh, come East. You know, I mean, there's some good teams out East, but, I mean, he'll more likely have an opportunity to get to the finals. In the East, it does out West. James Harden, how you feel about James Harden with the Pacers? <sighs> oh man, that would, yeah, like I, I, I would like that. Yeah, I would like that. Except you and I know <laughs> what the deal is there. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, that would yeah. be. I, I would like that. You know, um, they, would would they have to give up? Oladipo, they would the have. Trade. They would probably end up having to give up. I yeah. mean, but shit, if you could, if you could slide by, by if you could slide by keeping Oladipo and you gave away, I don't know, Miles, Miles Turner, Turner. And yeah, you know what I'm saying, like something mm-hmm. like that. But you gave, but you just, you just mortgaged your draft future. Yeah, right, right. T.J. Warren, if I'm Indiana, you might if I'm put in the package. Yeah, if I'm Indiana, I'm mortgaging my draft future to get James Harden. Yeah. At if what I'm, was he thirty? He's thirty years old, right? Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah. I, I, I would give him four first round picks. <laughs> I would, I would mortgage my draft future <laughs> for for three years of James Harden to see just to see what we could do. And and for the Pacers, that would make a statement to their yeah. fans. Yeah, you know, with all the stuff, you know, we we you know we we talked about the Chris Paul appearance on that podcast and what he had yeah. to say about the front office. Paul so. George, you mean? What did I say? 
Chris Paul. I'm sorry. Yeah, I meant Paul George. But yeah, mm-hmm. that that would change the complexion of how they operate. Um, right. Yeah, this this is just something that's it, it's it's non sports related. But I, I, I did want to acknowledge this. And we, we definitely got to send some prayers out to some people in the music industry um, because it's, it's, it's been a terrible week for music artists uh, this past week. Um, first of all, rest in peace to King Vaughn. Uh, rest mm-hmm. in peace to Mo3, if if that's how you say his name. Mo3. Mo, is it Mo3? Mo3. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, get well soon, Jeremiah. He's got some mm-hmm. COVID. Jeremiah. Did I? Mm-hmm. What did I say? Uh, it sounded like you said Jeremiah. Oh no, I said I said Jeremiah. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, get well soon. Got you know COVID issues and the last thing i heard he was on a ventilator or something crazy yeah. like that he is res- um to my understanding he has he's on it but he is responsive um uh, like he, he's still responsive like he can see you know what i'm saying he's responsive yeah. he's not that, like out yeah that's that's he's that's made great. some progress he's made some progress is what i'm saying that that that's great that's great because yeah. you know when you when you first hear ventilator you just you know just think yeah. the worst automatically yeah, man. And, um, and, I and gotta. That, um, yeah. And and that dude. I mean, he's not even forty yet. So shit, he might not be thirty yet. So I, I do think he's thirty. I, I'll double. I don't check know. That. I, I said might. That's why I said might. I'm not sure. Right. I, but right. But I mean, to the point. You know, everybody that you know to anyone that doesn't take COVID seriously and think that it's just older folks that are you know more problematic to it. You know, think again. You know, this guy, he's a young dude, and he was on a ventilator. So, you know, we we, we got to start taking, you know, people got to start taking stuff, you know, more seriously. But, uh, you know, shout out to Jeremiah and, you know, get well soon. Um, yes. Benny the Butcher got shot over the week. Yeah. Um, Little Boosie got shot over the week in the leg. I, I thought that, that they changed that that he didn't get shot in his leg and that he that his car just got shot his van his truck or whatever. What, was it just that? I that's, didn't see. I didn't see any other updates. Okay, last thing I heard is that he wasn't shot in his leg and that his car okay. got shot up. Okay. Okay. But well, nonetheless, nonetheless, prayers. Prayer, 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 prayers all around. And uh, and, and yeah. Little Wayne, I, I just got this news earlier today about the gun uh, charge. federal charges and stuff. Like, yeah, gun like damn, <laughs> man. Um, this wouldn't be his. This not his first gun charge, but um, right, right. I know those things get tricky, so I I I, I leave yeah. my comments to myself. What was was his first one by the feds? If do you remember? Mm, um, it was in New York. It was in New York, and okay. you know, gun, you know, New York don't play that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. New York was really strict about their gun laws. So, yep, yep. So, yeah, shout out, shout out to all them brothers, man, uh, and rest in peace to those that f- have fallen. Condolences to the families and to everyone else, man. Get well soon. Um, I do got to ask you this, Maestro, before we sign off: Who you got Thursday night uh, versus battle? If I tell you my answer, is this going to be a long, drawn-out conversation? I promise you it's not because I'm going to be honest okay. with you. I am confused as to how this went from T.I. versus Jeezy to Jeezy versus Gucci. <laughs> um, me too, the answer. Me too, but... I am confused. Uh, <laughs> I am, I am, yes, I'm confused. Um, and you know, obviously, we had a little exchange on Twitter about it. Yeah. Um, but but Jeezy's gonna win. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Um, I I, 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 I think um, I think Jeezy wins fourteen to six. I uh, I think Jeezy wins twelve to eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat room. Uh, Big Kev 303. We got uh, Deacon Dell and uh, BS3 Radio hopped on here. Appreciate everybody in the chat room. Uh, just a few things before we get up on out here. Uh, don't forget you guys can listen to us on iHeartRadio, 
um, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio. I think I thought I said that already. Um, Spotify. You can listen to us there also and on Amazon Music. Uh, make sure you guys uh, check us out on YouTube. Uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to that, make sure you do. Uh, we got the website, barbershopsportstalkpodcast.com. You can listen to past episodes there as well. Um, you can follow us on the Facebook page. You can follow us on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast, at Trey Frazier, at Maestro Styles. You can find us on Twitter at Barbershop SPOR2, also at Maestro Styles. And if you got any questions or comments about the show, you can hit us up at Barbershop Sports Talk 1 at gmail.com. So, Maestro, if you got nothing else, let's get up on out of here, man. Yes, sir. No doubt, no doubt. Y'all have a blessed week. We'll be back. <laughs>